Yeah, good morning. Uh, I don't know if you have heard about the Africa Cities Report, which the World Bank did uh, last year. Uh, this was a research for about three years. Uh, the lead author, uh, Shomik Lal, uh, is the lead author, who is a lead urban economist. Uh, unfortunately, he was unable to travel because of an urgent assignment. So I'm standing on behalf of him uh, to take you through uh, a few slides on what that report is about uh, in terms of really responding to some of the questions you raised. Yeah, Africa's urban population, I think Ricky covered uh, most of this, the current population, 472 uh, million. Uh, this is going to increase by uh, 2025, another Nigeria, 659 million. Uh, it's going to be 1 billion and about by 2040. So you can see Africa is urbanizing. Is urbanization an opportunity or a challenge? If it is a challenge, if we don't address the challenge, then this is going to be a serious problem, particularly uh, the use, uh, the bulging use population. Uh, so uh, urbanization is positively related with economic growth. That's really the opportunity. Uh, as you can see uh, in the picture, uh, you can see uh, South Korea, they made it in about uh, 40, 50 years. South Korea, around uh, 30,000 US dollars per capita, uh, which is an urban country, uh, above 80% urbanized. Uh, China, again, uh, highly urbanized. Uh, economic growth, highly associated, correlated with uh, urbanization. Uh, but are we doing what we're expected to do when we come to Africa? Uh, look at Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire. It's a challenge. When you look at the level of urbanization, Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria are more or less similar to that of China. But still, look at the per capita uh, of Nigeria uh, and Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, so uh, urbanization, as I said, is an opportunity. But if only we can manage it, if we can manage urbanization, it can be an opportunity. There is no country in the world which has actually grown and which has become middle income without urbanization. So urbanization is an opportunity, but only if we can uh, really uh, manage urbanization. Uh, again, uh, what are the challenges in Africa? You've seen that uh, urbanization is happening, Ar Africa is urbanizing, but the economic growth is not keeping pace with that of urbanization. One challenge we have, we have is Africa cities are costly for families. Uh, they are costly for firms, particularly in the international tradable goods, uh, goods and services uh, traded internationally. Why? So if you look at, uh, as I said, Africa cities are expensive uh, you know, for people, for householders, as well as for cities, particularly in the international tradables. If you look at, you know, the uh, purchasing power parity compare uh, index, you can see most of the African countries uh, compared to other uh, cities uh, in countries with the same level of income, African cities are very expensive. In fact, they are expensive uh, by 29% on the average. And most of this is accounted by housing. Uh, as you can see, uh, in Asia, about 70% of the firms are engaged in internationally tradable goods. Uh, in Africa, it's only 50%. If you look at uh, the yellow, uh, you know, that's the yellow is the international tradables, and the white is uh, the non-tradables. So most of African cities are engaged in uh, non-tradables. So what are you saying? As you can see, African cities have closed their door for business, for international tradables. They need to open up. One of the reasons is most of African cities, African countries, uh, the natural resource development uh, is actually crowding out urban development. 
Uh, if you can see the two uh, categories, you have countries uh, specialized in exporting uh, resource-based uh, exporters and non-resource-based exporters. If you can look at urbanization is highly associated with manufacturing and services when it comes to uh, non, uh, when it comes to uh, non-resource-based uh, exporters. But when it comes to uh, resource-based exporters, where most of African countries are, look at uh, the association of urbanization with that of uh, uh, manufacturing and services, you have a very weak uh, relationship. So, uh, as we say, uh, the other reason that's contributing to this, in addition to the natural resources, the physical form of cities. How are cities uh, evolving in Africa? Uh, look at how uh, economic dens densification uh, helped these countries. If you look at London, you know, this is how employment densification uh, is uh, in countries that really densify, that really cl cluster firms uh, in a small space. Uh, so what's exactly the problem with African cities? They are crowded, disconnected, and costly. Uh, this report actually uh, took 64 cities. Yeah, it took 64 cities, and through the years, it looked at how cities evolve, grow spatially, as well as uh, taking economic data. Uh, So when you look at the economic data of African cities, you can see uh, Latin America urbanized 40 per, at 40% urbanization. This was the per capita income, uh, 1,860. And look at Africa, 1994, East Asia, 3,000. Uh, Middle East and North Africa, 1968, it was 1,800. Africa, it's about 1,000 in 2013. You can imagine. Uh, urbanization is an opportunity, but why is African cities lagging behind? Uh, number one, they lack capital investment. Most of the African cities, they really lack, uh, or the capital, the level of capital investment is meager. Uh, buildings are not dense, uh, particularly investment in housing is very low. If you look at the low income, Countries, countries like probably Ethiopia, uh, the investment in housing is about 4%, uh, whereas uh, for other countries, uh, it's above uh, 8%, uh, 9%. So you can see the level of, the low level of uh, investment. And if you look at this graph, I don't know if you'll be able uh, to see, yeah. Uh, again, uh, the share of, if you look at the land use of cities, uh, Nairobi, 5.9% uh, of the land is used only for commercial and industrial uh, space. Uh, Addis Ababa, it's only 1.1% of the land is used for industrial and commercial uses. So if we don't have these industries, if we don't have these uh, commercial activities, how are we going to use, uh, to provide jobs to the youth? That's a challenge. We need to think about that. As I said, uh, the reason for this urban form is because of uh, disconnected, uh, the centers, the urban centers are developing as disconnected, and people, uh, because of this fragmented development, people, it's, not very, it's very difficult for people to communicate, uh, to interact, and also very challenging to go to jobs. Uh, this is uh, Kibera uh, in Nairobi, uh, probably uh, you know this, uh, place where this is uh, one pocket of the city, uh, which is uh, really not provided very well with services, transport, and that kind of thing. Uh, uh, again, this uh, shows really uh, the land, how land is being developed in Africa. This was, one was in 1990 and the other was in 2000. Uh, you can see how land is being developed in a fragmented manner uh, in Africa. So that's one of the challenge uh, 
for uh, development, for urban uh, development. Again, uh, this fragmented development is another challenge for providing transport. For, uh, you know, uh, if you see from CBD, from the center, sorry. Yeah, maybe I could come. It's a challenge. You need to have the density. You need to have the density in order to provide uh, mobility, in order to provide transport. Like in Nairobi, 42% of the, uh, the people, they work to work, and they can only access 11% of uh, the jobs. Uh, again, 20% use uh, Matatu, but they can only access 20% of the job. So what are we saying? We're saying Africa cities, they need to open their doors to the world uh, in order really uh, to capture uh, the benefits of uh, agglomeration. What should they do? They need to build credible institutions that lead with land administration uh, uh, and also that deal with land production, land transfer, uh, as well as uh, land supply. Uh, we need really, uh, I think, Ricky, you mentioned about governance. Governance is critical uh, when it comes to land administration, uh, valuation, and so on, and uh, the use of land. Uh, look, for instance, here, this shows really, if you look, uh, sometimes we put uh, restrictions which the cities cannot enforce. Look at Dar es Salaam, the minimum square meter is 375. Uh, in Philadelphia, 28 square meter, but look at the built-up area. Uh, the, this is uh, not in accordance to uh, the regulation. So sometimes we put regulations which are hard and fast to respect, but uh, we cannot enforce it. So I think in conclusion, uh, what I'm, I'm saying, institutions are very important. Uh, we need to have a reform. Uh, really to reform the land. Uh, we need to really dynamize uh, the land market. Uh, we need to uh, develop institutions, uh, and we need to also to invest in uh, really infrastructure, particularly uh, in upgrading uh, neighborhood. This is uh, a neighborhood in Dar es Salaam. Uh, as a result of upgrading, as, as a result of really providing services, uh, you can see how uh, the value of land has changed in this uh, informal settlement as compared to the other areas. So uh, that's one. Thank you. <laughs>